Uh, I said, I think you're on mute. I can hear you now. I, but I wouldn't allow me to join the, the last one. Um, I can, I can, can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, Stephen, we can hear you, but uh, uh, your, only your eyes are visible. Everything above your eyes are visible. Yeah, because it was stressful trying to get into this meeting, man, the pressure. I mean, then I had to... Just a second, let me log back in. Sorry, guys, one second. You guys, uh, am I audible now? Yep. Uh, yeah, you're, you're quite uh, clearly on. Thanks a lot. Uh, hey, Steven, how are you doing today? <laughs> I was doing fine until the rehearsal. You know what I mean? It's fine, we are live now. Thanks, and looks like a full house. So thanks, thanks everybody for joining. Um, and we'll just get started right away. Uh, we're live, okay. Hello everyone, thank you for joining. For just a moment. Okay. All right, that's us. So Aditi is from uh, Singapore. She joined us in the afternoon uh, Singapore time webinar. And now this is afternoon New York time. Good afternoon, Stephen. How, how's Good your day afternoon. so far? It's amazing. And it's amazing. Thank you for inviting me to uh, speak on this exciting webinar. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and guys, just to set context, uh, what we would be doing is talking about specifically about the five forms of video right so so i think i think people understand that virtual events are are, are at the heart of of the event industry i think uh, i think this pandemic has made us realize what's important and what's not and and it seems definitely that uh, events are important uh, and and you cannot live without it and, and virtual events is the way to go uh, so I think uh, this, this afternoon, our, our focus would be to understand how video is transforming virtual events and what, what kinds of uh, different video we're looking at. Uh, you know, so we're going to discuss five different ways of engaging with video um, and, and, and how that can add value to your virtual events. And I think Stephen, as a general point, what, what we've been talking about is how video in many forms is not only at the heart of virtual events, but as a whole, you know, when you talk about digital transformation of our society, of, of the businesses, I mean, if you just take video as a component, right, from Netflix to uh, Facebook, to YouTube, to, uh, to any social app, to IoT, uh, uh, you know, I think I, even when you would go and talk about uh, VR, you essentially have video as the core transport layer. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and I think if you just take away video from the equation, you know, I think the whole concept of 5G doesn't make sense. The whole digital transformation of the society doesn't add value. Twitter wouldn't add value today as much as with video versus without video. So. Absolutely. Know, I mean, just, just to give you an idea, um, like I had a, an amazing demo um, just about an hour or so ago. And to be able for them to see myself and just to communicate with the team and just to engage, it was just an extra layer of, uh, of trust, if you will, as opposed to just sending an email uh, on text. Right. So to be able to see the person is, is, is actually yeah. you know, paramount. So, so just a tech alert, you know, we are going to go slightly deeper today. Um, we're not going to go about and talk about the general benefits of uh, virtual events, but we're slightly going to go a bit. So this, was, this is probably the most technical slide you will see. Uh, but uh, I think it's um, for the people who are trying to implement video in their events and for people who are trying to understand how video works, 
uh, I'll try and simplify this. This is this this sounds like a lot of words, and could be a lot. But but let's go one by one. I think some of our attendees in the past have found it useful to understand. So let's go one by one. Uh, the first one I think is pretty pretty obvious. I mean, if, if there are any YouTube users who you know who've seen by clicking on the settings icon, you you've often seen the auto 1080p icon which is essentially the resolution for HD. And then, and then I don't know if you've tried it, but you can actually reduce the resolution to go back to 720, 480, 360. And essentially these are different, you can say resolution qualities of, of the video that's streaming, uh, whether it's on demand or, or streaming live. And why it's important, uh, Stephen, what we've been talking about is how you have an automatic adaptive bitrate. And, and I think while implementing video, the fact that you need to understand how to implement this uh, as, as the bitrate needs to adapt, not only based on the bandwidth, but also based on the scenario. So what we've seen, what we've implemented in our products is that let's say you have a panel discussion, right? Where there are two, where there are two speakers and that could kick off on 1080p by default. Uh, and as more speakers join in, you know, the window sizes would be smaller uh, and to prevent uh, let's say someone who might be on his mobile device or maybe on a on a subway or may not be in the optimum bandwidth area. So what we do is we, based on the number of speakers is actually automatically goes down to say up to 480p. 480p is still good enough from, from a, you know, a webinar conferencing kind of perspective. So it's not just adaptive bitrate based on your bandwidth, but also based on how many live channels you have. Because when you're doing a virtual event, it's rarely just one channel, you, you, would, you could have as much as 15, 16 channels live coming in. So that's like 16 YouTube lives playing at the same time. And, and I think that that's one, one concept that people need to be aware. Of course, most event planners don't need to take care of these things. Uh, you know, companies like ours, we do that. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's good to be aware. You know, coming to the second point, I think I think many of many of our uh, attendees who've tried any form of live streaming, they've probably heard the word RTMP, or they've also heard terms like HLS. Now, now to, to simplify, you know, this is an entire webinar topic on its own, but essentially, if you have a live source, uh, whether it's a whether it's a game going on, or whether it's a file you're trying to live stream, or whether it's a camera, for example, right now. That, that's you know, taking our videos and streaming to each device. Essentially, you need a protocol to stream data from the, your device to a streaming server. So the common protocols are used today, RTMP, HLS, RTMP being slightly more popular at the moment. And it's the older protocol, actually. It's actually the one that was used uh, with Adobe and the Adobe Flash, if you remember those days, which of course, Mr. Jobs with one email, he, he destroyed that, that part of the business from Adobe. Um, if, if you remember to, you know, when in 2008, 2009. Uh, but yeah, this is as I, I know this might be a little more technical for some of our attendees, but I think it's important to understand these basic terms, especially when you're trying to configure because you do come across these settings. The second part is server to device, right? So of course you've got, let's say you're getting the video stream up to the server from whichever source, you know, it could be a home camera, it could be a professional camera setup, doesn't matter. But you've got the feed coming into your server and now it needs to go to each mobile device, each browser, et cetera. And, and the only two pro protocols relevant today are actually, uh, Stephen is HLS or MPEG Dash. And HLS is actually something that Apple uh, Apple made popular, uh, whereas MPEG Dash is more of a Google Play. But uh, MPEG Dash doesn't work very well on uh, on especially mobile devices. Strangely enough, at the moment, so HLS is really the uh, protocol to stream on browsers today. Uh, you know, just to give you context, when when Flash was around, it was actually RTMP all the way through. So from source to server and server to your Flash client, it was the RTMP protocol. Uh, you know, handling the handling the whole stream. But now RTMP is only from source to server, but from server to device, uh, it's usually HLS. And that's what we use as well. The best part is it, it's, it works great, both on mobile devices, 
as well as supported on Android, iOS, tablets, as well as as well as most browsers. Uh, so again, apologize if it's sounding very technical to a lot of people, but you know, just to get it out of the way. Um, and and as I said, this is this is this is the most tech slide you will see, and we'll straight away go to use cases after this. And the last one, I think you 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 again you encounter these terms like S.264 and AAC. Now, again, to simplify what these kind of things mean, is that if you're trying to live stream uh, from a camera or from any device, you know the feed cannot land up as an MP4 and an MOV file, right? They have to be encoded in in a format which is which is called H.264, and even there's a modern one for 265 for video and AAC for audio. So just think of it as a packager, and then it runs on top of these protocols. What we're talking about. So. I know this is, um, you know, I was told that this might get too technical, but I think some of, based on the feedback before, I think we get a mixed crowd of people who are fairly semi-technical and, uh, you know, they, they understand. And I'm happy to take questions later on if uh, sort of these, uh, these things resonate. Uh, so that's it. So the good part is coming now. <laughs> okay. So, Steven, so so which ones which ones have you worked with from these you know the five different video types of virtual yeah, so so just to kind of walk you know you, you through um, you know, these five different ways of interactive um, activities you know in in the virtual platform arena such as events I mean so the on demand video this is really cool because um, the on demand video this is this gives you an opportunity as an event planner to essentially you know pre record. Uh, you know, the video adding all the bells and whistles, you know, like if you want to add some cool graphics um, across the screen so you can pre-record the video. And then when you're going into the session, you have the ability to watch the video. And the beauty is you can actually pose this on-demand video as a live video as well. So, yeah, you know, I two. actually yeah. demonstrated this. Yeah, I actually demonstrated this, uh, you know, just leading into point two, demonstrated this, you know, on, on the demo today. So the on-demand video, so as a user experience, you know, I can just walk through, cruise in the lobby, and at my own discretion, at my own leisure, you know, I can just, you know, pick, you know, drop in and watch the video whenever at my own discretion. So, so, so you know, what, one, one, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Stephen, but, you know, the one thing is, I think most people are familiar with on-demand. Uh, you know, they, they, they have YouTube and they have, you know, their own video sites, but I think, I think the only caution is that while it's it's the ground zero, it's it's the sort of default, uh, you know, the the most simpler part. But it's it's important to make sure that when you when you're having an event, it's actually transcoded into multiple bitrate formats. So it's not as simple as just uploading your, uh, you know, MOV file or an M, you know MP4 file, and expecting to stream properly. So. So you need the necessary engines to make sure that not only is it transcoded into different bit rates, but it also works effectively across all devices. So it's a simple, simple concept, but but it's still very integral for any uh, any any video going. And and yeah, and the second part is you you rightly said, uh, you know this is something that might be new to some of our attendees, of how do you live stream a pre-recorded video, and we'll just come to that in a second. Yeah, so just kind of continuing on. Um, so, you know, obviously you got the live stream. This is where you can add the bells and whistles, um, but you can you can make it appear that it's, it's live. So everything that's going on in the back end, you know, it looks like, okay, this is really live. So that's really cool. Um, and then you also have, you know, the live session broadcast. So this is where you better get on the session in time, um, just like in real life. Like if you, you don't want to walk late into a session. So when you see a live session and there's also respective icons, that let you know that there's a live session, there's, you know, live stream, pre-recorded video and on demand, but the live session, it starts at that scheduled time. And then when you enter the live session, you know, you can begin interacting in real time, um, meaning that you can, you can ask the speaker questions. So this is more, you're getting more into the engagement element when you're in a live session. So you can, yeah. you know, communicate amongst others and, and the speakers alike. Go ahead, Sid. No, no, I'm just saying, so this part, the, the point number three is actually very similar to the experience right now, you know, a, a classic webinar kind of, yeah. kind of feel. However, the way it differs is that, you know, you'll find that, uh, you know, simple solutions like what you're using now, you need a, you need a downloadable uh, client, whereas on E2M, you don't need any client. Uh, you can run it right off your browser and at your own choice, you can have mobile apps as well. So that, that really 
uh, you know helps in 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 making sure that you know you can engage with the live session in different formats in in line to your content and we we'll have a closer look at it as as we move forward absolutely and then i think this is this is really neat said i mean yeah. you know the round table discussions i mean this is really bringing that uh, that live event experience to the virtual platform so i mean it is what it is i mean you can literally go to a round table you could see who is attending that round table and if you're lucky if there is a seat that's available um, you can then be able to sit at the round table and begin engaging on that specific topic and what's really neat about this is um, you can repurpose this this doesn't necessarily have to be you know a specific session type related topic so you can repurpose the round tables to really bring your events to, to real life scenarios you can repurpose it as a cocktail reception i've even seen on some agenda said where uh, they, they use round tables as coffee breaks so you, you know so you can you can go to the round table and meet with thought leaders or you can just repurpose it just like a real live event um, yeah. where you can have and, a cocktail and is, yeah and you know this is actually the favorite of mine i would say this is the probably the most favorite form of engagement and i'll tell you why when we when we come to that come to that session uh, but this is absolutely i think a game changer and then finally the fifth one is the obvious one where you want to make sure that your pre schedule meetings with attendees or or you meet with exhibitors uh, yeah and then one the, this one is that this one is my personal favorite too, because you know okay. just just from an exhibitor's perspective i mean if you go to like say other streaming platforms you really can't showcase you know who you are you're just in a little right. square and you know, with the one-on-one -on -one video calls, you can meet directly with the exhibitor, um, and you can even request a call back as well uh, right. with the exhibitor. Exactly. So I think it's really neat yeah. from an RI perspective. Yeah. So let's let's dive in, and we we will discuss different technical elements and implementation elements of these. And just to set a perspective, we have a roughly a thirty-minute sort of a um, uh, you know uh, webinar, and then followed we have an open time up to the next uh, you know for for Q and A. Uh, so that's just to set some uh, perspective on, on the timeline. Uh, okay, so we, we've discussed video on demand. I mean, as I said, I think um, I think the risk is in considering that it's trivial. If you if you ever try to implement on demand in terms of making sure it syncs from your media library uh, and works effectively, whether you're an exhibitor or whether you're trying to attach it to your uh, sessions, uh, you know, it's really important to get it right especially when you're trying to have pre-recorded videos of your sessions. So, you know, one common use is other than exhibitor collateral is also that you have your sessions recorded and played back after. And again, you know, adding things like paywall around it so that you can, you can charge for your content if you like. And, uh, you know, to have the experience of people who are late, who you might even want to have a channel open across the year you know, and convert your event site into actually a media site, uh, which we see some of our customers doing that. So on demand, while it's common, uh, it's, it's important to get it right. Okay, so this is what, I think this is something that a lot of people have probably experienced it, but they've not realized that they're doing it. And this is slightly different than putting your camera onto a sports field or onto a physical actual event. Now you guys must be seeing a lot of these events happening on Facebook, you know, from charity events to rock concerts that have been curated from different artists. Uh, and you know that they're not performing really live because you know, you have, you might have Elton John somewhere and you might have, uh, you know, uh, some other, uh, other rock star somewhere and, and they're just performing in sync. And you know that it's not possible for them to be performing at that time. However, it's streamed live. And uh, so it's really important. And why it's really important is we'll show you in comparison is that this is actually a pre-recorded video. So just a video file, it could be an MOV file, it could be an MP4 file, and then it's transcoded to stream like as if it was live. Now, now, the, now the fact is that the difference is that it only runs from, from the time it's scheduled you know, to, its, to its length which means that if you join the stream 10 minutes later, you don't start from the beginning, you just start from you know, the point where the stream is at the end of 10 minutes. And we will just come to the fact that why it's important to use this uh, in your virtual events. Uh, and of course you can, other than your own event app or website, if, if you have a consumer facing 
uh, event, uh, you know, say Comic Con or, or something like that, and you want certain sessions to, uh, you know, go live on YouTube or Facebook, then you know our our streaming servers do the do the parallel live as well. So really, really important. And what we're finding is that almost every second event that we're doing, uh, you know, we, we're finding people using the, uh, you know, the the uh, simulated live stream as we call it. And and you know, the, Stephen, the, the the metrics actually show why it's important. I mean, technically, it's the same video file, right? You you could play it on demand or you could stream it live. But the engagement is huge. You know, when people see it's live, they it, it might be something from a psychology perspective. They are more attracted to the fact that it's mm -hmm. live. Uh, they don't want another, to miss out. Yeah, they don't want to miss out, and that's the next point. You know, the fear of missing out. They know that if I if I join one hour later, it's going to finish. So they they make sure that so one of the key aspects of any event is that you need to get a bunch of people together at the same time to drive in energy to drive engagement. You know, energy of course because. Uh, when, when you're together, there is a form of energy exchange, but also to drive engagement. And if you have to drive engagement, you need people to be either virtually or in real at the same time. Absolutely. You know, the third third factor of reuse, you know, both can be equally reused. But again, if you if you see your uh, you know browsing habits on Facebook, if you see uh, an on-demand video, but it says that it was live eight hours ago, you want to know what happened eight hours ago. So again, there is this whole element of reuse. And of course, there's no competition on the wow factor. You know, the metrics are absolutely off the charts. If a video is saying it's live, it just holds a special place for the attendees versus, versus on demand. Yeah. I agree. So it's like you're part of something. Absolutely. Any, any experience, Steven? Have you, have you been yeah, an so, I mean, or, I, or recently? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, a while, a while ago, I used to um, work for the VMA Awards back when I was in college and just knowing, the, it, I mean, I didn't realize it, like to your point, it really wasn't, it really wasn't live. I mean, it obviously was pre-recorded, but it felt like, okay, and now we're live from Times Square. It just really, right. that, that buzz that it creates, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm really a part of something special, you know? Exactly. Um, it's just, it's just like you don't want to watch the Lakers game or a Yankees game, if you will, right. Um, right. after it's over on demand. You want to see it while, while it's happening. And FOMO is my favorite one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is an example uh, you know, of an event we did where, where again, the same concept of uh, video going live, you know, simulated live was done. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, uh, it was for the, it was for a large charity. Uh, you know, we of course cannot disclose a lot of details on from a confidentiality point of view, but uh, you know, you can see that other than having the video live, uh, there was a running stream of a photo wall that went below, as well as uh, a text to pledge, uh, which you could switch. So, you know, it, it required a lot of, create, lot of uh, it was technically actually very challenging because to make that happen on a browser with, with the ability to have things in real time, like your photo wall in real time. So uh, attendees could email their photos and the event planners could select which ones they want to publish, the sizing of the photos, making sure it publishes like a reel and on demand to switch it to text to pledge uh, and making sure it works for thousands of attendees. It is, it is a technical challenge. And of course, our, our job is to simplify that challenge. But this is one example of uh, uh, you know, simulated live. And of course, this, uh, Stephen, this is, I think people understand live session. I'm not going to spend too much time considering that, uh, you know, we want to spend more time in questions, but this is something that people are familiar. Of course, the benefit of having you, you need to make sure that if it's your virtual event site, you cannot afford to have asked people to download things. You know, it has to run on your browser. So that's really key. So this is an example where uh, you know, how it might look like. And, and the best part is, you know, the way you see a news feed in CBS or ABC or Fox, where literally you have your own branding, right? And, and this is like a branding that's being used. So like a, like a regular web page, you can actually skin your video experience. You, know, you, could, have, you could have it any which way. And that's, that's again, very important from a virtual event perspective. You know, how, you, how do you want the video experience to happen? Um, 
and, and as you can see, this is a full, full fledged webinar front end, uh, but it's happening on the browser. And this, yes, so this is what I said. And, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite, uh, Stephen. Is, and the reason it's my favorite is that most of the video calls that you do, it's actually with people you know, you know most of the time. So that, well, that's I the general behavior. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Sid, I, I know from experience this is your personal favorite because when we go to live events, yeah, this is where you can find Sid. He's, he's at these roundtables, networking. Right. You know, peeking in sometimes, and what's what's really interesting about this city is yeah. sometimes you don't sit down. You know, you sometimes you may you know peruse over and just kind of listen in with not even yeah. saying anything, just to see exactly. if you're interested. And that's what's really cool about these roundtables yeah. too is you yeah. can be a spectator. You don't have to sit down if you don't feel comfortable. You I mean, stand. people who've not experienced this, you know, it's really almost it's exciting to see that there's somebody on that table who's yeah. interested, who, who's discussing about a topic that I care about. I can see his profile before I join the table. And then in a moment, I am having a video chat with someone that I, that I don't know. And that, that fact is actually the most exciting about it because when you are having a one-to-one -one call or when you have a webinar, you exactly know whom you're going to be talking to. When you're having a Google meet, you know that it's your colleagues on the other line. And, but this is really powerful. And, and I can tell you the kind of connections we've made, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the kind of uh, engagement that's happened in Roundtable is just off the charts. Uh, and I know this is a, you know, we have a short webinar today, but this is absolutely off the charts. And I would highly recommend that this be part or, you know, core part of most uh, virtual absolutely. event strategies. Yeah. Absolutely. Coming to your favorite. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, this, this, this is my favorite because, I mean, me, I mean, I've exhibited a lot, a lot of times yeah. at events. And you know, yeah. there's nothing more pleasant than seeing that face come to your booth, right? looking to learn a little bit more about what you do. Right. So to have this right. in a virtual platform, I mean, to actually have you know, attendees come up to me, um, right. want to know information. I mean, I think that's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You know, and it's, 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 it's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there's, uh, there's one more aspect where this is something that we're launching in July which is actually a combination of one-to-one -one and the round table, which is essentially that you, you, you agree to be part of this uh, social lounge where for, you know, uh, you, you have a video chat with other business visitors who come on your screen for anywhere from one minute to three minutes, and then they go off when a new person comes in and the system matches based on your, your target. So if you are a vendor and you are looking for customers, you know, of a certain profile uh, and somebody else is looking for, so it, it does the matching and then randomly through serendipity places them into a video call. So you don't select, you don't even select whom you're going to talk to. Wow. Uh, yeah. So this is really cool. It's, it's relevant to certain kinds of events, uh, but. Uh, How do they apply this to the real world? There's so many times when you go to an event and it's like, who do yeah. I talk to? I have no idea, but this is placing you to the best match. So you, you know, um, who you could potentially meet. I mean, this is, this is, this yeah. is paramount. Yeah, this Fair. is, the, the, this, you know, this is something that you don't even experience in real events no. because, you know, the fact is that in a real event, you know, as you know, better than only certain kinds of people, you know, get to meet new people and that could be at the most five or six new connections. Right. And those people are the people who, who have sort of the gift of the gab, if you like, right. Yep. They can go and talk. They can walk the lunch tables. They can be, a, you know, yeah. like say hello to anybody and everybody yeah. on you know, the coffee. But you know that there are a lot of shy people around as well, right? There are. People, there are. There are. And, just six, they just need that little push. Yeah. And and this, so while round table, you have to take the initiative to go and join a table. This is like, you just have to be in the lounge and people will come and then you talk to them for anywhere from one to three minutes so that your time is utilized very effectively. So let's say you are in a telecom. So we did this big, large energy show and let's say you are in this energy and telecom show, right? And you are a big telco and you're looking for vendors for your 5G rollout, right? And you only want to see vendors of 5G equipment, 5G fiber optics, you know, 5G antennas, 5G services. And, and you know, to meet, for example, 10 people over 30 minutes and get their business cards and, and have a quick hello and say that we'll talk later, you know, that's immense. 
that's oh, I mean, I wish we could apply this to the real world scenario because there's been times where our exhibit booth positioning, we just don't get the traffic. Yeah. But to have this opportunity, I mean, like I said, yeah. I mean, this this is incredible. So, so yeah, we're really proud of this one. And of course, this was led by some of our customers who were insisting that they wanted a hybrid of the round table and one-to-one. -one. Uh, so we, we are doing that and it's going to launch in July, uh, this part. So, you know, I want to just, you know, this is all the sales stuff. You need to put that in, right, Stephen? <laughs> uh, but uh, so we're coming close to this, this, uh, this webinar, but you know, one thing that's also very important, I think, I think that people miss out when they're trying to set a virtual event is the usability. Uh, is the way the forms look, you know, even simple things like the registration form. I mean, how many times have you looked at a registration form, Stephen, and felt, wow, when did you say, wow, on seeing a reg form? Uh, not, not too often, right? You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really interesting you said this, and this is not even being salesy. Well, this is literally verbatim from the last demo that I just did. Well, uh, one of the prospects, she said, um, wow, this is so clean. It's the, the ease, just to, just going back to the round table, just, I can just pop in and pick a seat. Yeah. That's how we want to do it. We want it to be seamless and easy. We don't, because there are people who can be challenged in, in terms of how to get into video and so forth. So you're absolutely right. And, and you know, the fact is that the event, as most event planners know, is, is an experience, you know? And that's why it's not just a tool, uh, it's an experience, you know, you're, you're curating an experience and what we've done is that we've, we've created an out of the box experience package, you know, some, some of our designers from, you know, who are spread across London, New York, Singapore, and even parts of India, we, we've been working on, you know, you will be amazed when you see them debate over pixels, you know, whether it should be one millimeter here and one millimeter there, what's the color of the agenda sheet, for example, and and you know, if, if you know the, the one large charity that we worked with uh, last month and, and the fact that what happens when you do a cancel or a submit, you know, whether it's a confetti that comes out or whether it's, you know, it's not just thank you for submitting your form. And, and we've had things like people say, you know, I want to fill up a form. I mean, most of the times when you get a form, it's like, kill me. <laughs> I don't want another, I don't, I don't want another <laughs> form. You know, I want to get out of this. You know, I hope it auto fills. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to be bold enough and take some names here. I mean, look at companies like Webex, right? I mean, it's literally like they've, they've stabbed themselves. Like you see a Webex form and you want to run. You want exactly. to run. It's almost like Cisco, you know, after acquiring them, almost sabotage them. You know, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to go out and say, because I have, I have tweeted them out of compassion mm -hmm. uh, that, and I have given them a mm -hmm. screenshot <laughs> and I've said that, do you seriously expect people to register using this form? And, and, and you can check my tweet, you can check my Twitter account and they've actually come back and said, we understand. And here is our email for our usability department for you to report. <laughs> and I'm saying that, you know, there, there, there's a reason why you're not around in a way that exactly. you were. I'm not gonna take the time to send an email to tell you why I don't like your form. Right. You so, lost it. Coming to the point is that, you know, experience is a big part. And, and I think a lot of the virtual event platforms, they, they, look, they look like they were made in 1980s, right? In terms mm -hmm. of the, the look, you know, I've, I've seen them. And I think, you know, other than the fact that it has to be video first, we are really looking at something where it's, uh, you know, experience first. You know, you're really looking at the experience where you, where you say, wow, many times during your experience. So why do you need those servers to make sure it streams and it scales horizontally? You also want to make sure that people say, wow, you know, that was an experience. Uh, so I think that's, that's a quick thing. And I think we've, we have a few questions, uh, Stephen, can, can you see them on your screen or? Yeah, let me just pull it up here. So it looks like we got a uh, first question from uh, Steve Lasky. Okay. Um, this is supposed to be a webinar on how to hold virtual events. Um, so, okay, it looks like you got everything answered here. Um, are you guys, so this is from Uzair. This is a very good question. Are you guys a mobile event app or do you offer uh, these streaming and meeting components as a white label service that others can use and uh, integrate into their own experiences? So that's, that's a very good question. 
Um, so, so just to be clear, um, you know, this experience that you're seeing here now is purpose for your desktop. Um, but, you know, if need be, we do offer, you know, native apps for iOS and Android uh, as well, giving you the ability to utilize, you know, the platform that we're using, which is uh, um, uh, Agora. And, and, you know, you pretty much can brand the event exactly to the way you want it in terms of, you know, where do you want, do you want a photo wall? Where do you want um, the look and feel to be? What do you want the, the virtual so, yeah, lobby to so look like? Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good point, Stephen. So just to add to that, you know, the default experience is, of course, on, on our website, and you will see from the CMS that you can, you can, you know, without any designer help, you can actually design and, and place the objects. However, we do offer you iframe and, and the object code. So, you know, we, we keep getting these requests where they want to embed, for example, just a round table within an existing CMS, or they want to embed a live stream within uh, an alternate media platform that they have. And that's entirely possible, including the authentication. Uh, that's something that we offer to our enterprise customers so that they can, they, can use, they can use the objects from E2M and place them in different parts. So as an example, you could have it within Salesforce, right? You're having, a, you're having all your employees logging into Salesforce and you want an employee town hall within Salesforce, it's possible using the Lightning components to embed within Salesforce. However, when you talk about a public event, you know, of course, the recommended way is that you have your own URL and people log in and, and it's so customizable that yes, it is, it is entirely branded uh, to the event uh, branding. Yeah. So it looks like Raquel has a very great, uh, a great question, um, kind of piggybacking off one of my favorite features, okay. uh, which is, you know, the virtual booth uh, for an exhibitor. Um, right. have, you, have we found tactics, certain techniques uh, to increase engagement? Um, right. For, you know, to this, well, you know, that depends on a lot of things. I mean, you know, I've seen I've seen some exhibitors be as creative as sending them swag, like just like you do when you go to a regular event. So if you stop by the booth, they'll get your you know your address and they'll mail you that cool uh, coffee mug or that T-shirt. Or, you know, just the content It's pretty much, you know, what content are you providing at the booth? Because not only can you talk to them in real time, you can also upload, you know, collaterals like uh, pre-recorded videos as well as presentations. So it, it all depends on, you know, what type of ammo uh, you're bringing uh, to the booth. But in terms of tactics and technique, it's just thinking outside of the box. Just like what I just mentioned, you know, being able to greet with the attendees and then, you know, being able to send them some real swag, you know, a virtual platform. So it does give it that real feeling as if you're at an event. Yeah. So, yeah, just to add to that, uh, you know, I think, I think the alerts that we have, the alerts module that that's been bringing people back in. Uh, so what we do is that we make sure that not only you get in-app alerts, but you know, things like text alerts as well as email, because these virtual events, they actually go on, uh, you know, sometimes for many days, up to three days typically. And, and you want to make, and you don't expect someone to be sitting on their desktop, you know, for the, for the entire duration. So what you want to make sure is that they've built a, an agenda. So we allow them to build their own My Agenda. Uh, if you have multiple tracks and multiple sessions and then, and then make sure they come back. So the alerts have been getting them back in yeah. And and based on the profile, if they, if you know, once they enter into something like a roundtable, you know, they get that uh, they, they get that feedback loop, right? Uh, so getting them on their my agenda has really been very powerful because of course we cannot expect somebody to be to be live, you know, eight hours into three days, for example. Or or you, or you could just you know like just make it more of a fun element as well. I mean, just gamify it. You know, right. we, we right. do have a pretty robust, you know, gamification utility where you can do kind of like a quiz or trivia. Right. So you right. go to the exhibitors and if you, if you answer the right questions, you unlock a badge and you can win that. So that can incentivize them right. to, uh, to visit that exhibitor as well right. in a fun type of way. Looks like uh, Claire uh, has a question. Can you give us more information about how you partner with event agencies? How do you monetize uh, your products, you know, we, we work with a lot of, you know, even agencies, meaning that, you know, we're, we're very scalable. 
uh, in terms of no matter, you know, how big or how small, you know, your event is, you know, we do have a pricing structure, you know, that can fit, you know, your prospective client's needs. You know, that's one of the benefits, you know, of working with us, you know, um, and I'd, I'd love to speak with you, Claire, you know, directly and kind of give you some examples of who I worked with and go really into depth on you know, how we work with agencies and how it's advantageous uh, to, you know, utilize our platform and your goods to sell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah. So, so just to add to that, uh, Stephen, I think, I mean, I think we event partners are very important to us. Um, and, and, and many of our large events have been by agencies. So we, we value those relationships. Uh, Absolutely. And I think their experience in, in producing the event and our experience in making sure the technical experience and, and the, the user, user experience of the attendees as well as the technical infrastructure to make sure the video works. Because I think at the end of the day, virtual events, the, the bedrock is video. And with that experience of handling video in its multiple forms, uh, in, its, uh, you know, in the scale that we've done, uh, I think it's very hard for event agencies to even go in that route. Uh, it's Absolutely. just that it's, it's not their competence, you know, they, it's, it's not and supposed do, to be their competence. And we take relationships, you know, very seriously. You know, we're, we're in it for the long term. We're here you know, as an extension of, uh, of your firm, of your agency. I mean, we walk you through the entire process on how to set this up. We don't just say, good luck. I hope it goes well. Um, no, we, we're, we're there from beginning to end, um, you know, ensuring that, you know, you have a, a rock star, you know, event for your client. Okay, I think uh, yeah we're we're getting up to that. So thanks, thanks Stephen, thanks for your help, and thanks guys for mm -hmm. tuning in. I hope you found this short webinar useful. Um, you know what we do is that if you go to our website uh, on e2m.live, you can actually schedule uh, a meeting there right away. Uh, if you would like a private one-to-one -one demo or or an actual walkthrough to of an event. Uh, so we have a nice nifty tool there. You can schedule a demo. Uh, uh, and You guys and have to see have it in real chat. time. You have yeah. to see it in real time. I mean, when once you see this in action, I mean, I, I guarantee you have my stamp of approval that, you know, you guys will enjoy what you see. It's very cool. The PowerPoint, the, the presentation just doesn't give it enough justice. Um, but to see it in real time in action, you know, set some time out. I'd love to, you know, walk you through all of these features and how we can bring your events back to life. With that, thanks guys, be safe, uh, enjoy the weekend ahead, and uh, see you in the next webinar. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thanks, Zoe. Yeah.